Well, hey everybody, I'm Doug Podell from WCSX, and this is Rock 900, another full hour of Motor City music coming your way. And this show is all about the blues. We have some of the best blues players in the world right here in the Motor City. And I know the crew couldn't believe it when I told them that frigid pink was coming into the studio today. They are a great blues band out of Detroit, and they've got a brand new album called Detroit to prove it. Now, this is the Frigid Pink you probably remember. Blues band out of Detroit, late 60s and 70s, had a massive hit with House of the Rising Sun, but this is Frigid Pink today, still made in Detroit and still rocking the blues. Hey, we're joined here in the studio by none other than Frigid Pink. And before we get started, I got to tell you, half the crew wants your autograph before you leave. Cool. Okay, all right. But this is the brand new album. It's called Made in Detroit. They've been around, though, for a while, since the late 60s and early 70s. They're really a part of the foundation of Motor City music. They played the Grandy, the East Town, Pine Knob. And uh, Rick, I guess I got to ask you, you had one of the biggest hits really out of Detroit with Frigid Pink with how House of the Rising Sun, uh, when it was all coming together back then with the concerts and the TV shows, what were some of the ones that you were doing back then? What were some of the TV shows you were on back in the 60s? Well, Swing a Time, of course. Swing a Time with Robin Seymour. Oh, yeah. The Birds of Word. Yep. Uh, the Upbeat Show out of Cleveland. Oh, yeah. Um, we did a film special with John Biner in Nevada that was really cool. The first time we, the band had been on a plane. Uh, so that was that was a trip. Um, they had planes back then. Yes, they did. <laughs> uh, Midnight special too. Were you no, on we that? didn't do that one. Okay. No. I thought I might have seen you on that at one point, but uh, man, you did a lot. And what were some of the big shows that I, now Frigid Pink actually headlined most of those concerts back then? Yes. Because you were big in Europe, you were big worldwide, not just regional. Australia was a blast. Uh, a month down there. Uh, and when we pulled into the airport, it was like we were the Beatles because it was 3 o'clock in the morning and there are people everywhere. There's reporters, there's big TV cameras. I, we got the royal treatment there. It was pretty cool. But places around here, you name it, we played it. Yeah. Montreal Forum, we got our first candlelight standing ovation. And the first two groups to get a uh, candlelight standing ovation there was John Lennon and Led Zeppelin. Oh, so that was a pretty good company. Yeah, yeah. No question about it. Well, a lot of people remember the, this frigid pink right over here. Uh, it was, you know, the wah wah pedal, the bell bottoms, and lava lamps. <laughs> and that was supposed to be the title of the album, but they just called it frigid pink. Mm -hmm. But, Chuck, I got to ask you mm -hmm. with a band this legendary and having, you know, three or five big albums, really, with a couple of hits on each one, what's it like? For you, as one of the guys who sings their biggest song, House yeah. of the Rising Sun, uh, what, what's it like to keep the legacy of Frigid Pink alive? There's a little bit of pressure there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. To uh, One, it's it's not an easy song to sing. And I've heard uh, that from a lot of people. Because it's it, it's kind of like doing the Star Spangled Banner, because the range is, is so wide in, in the song. You have to start real low, and then you have to go up real high. and and uh, but. To play in frigid pink, it's it's been uh, it's been really uh, humbling have, in, in a way. Have it, you it, had to get many paisley shirts, or <laughs> are, you, are you doing okay with your own wardrobe? Well, I, I have to get rid of some of my black stuff. You know, yeah. I always, I'm, I've been playing in, in cover bands so so long, and you know, we wear a lot, a lot of black, so. Stever says I have to have to get you more. Brighten up a little, have to dude. brighten yeah, it up. Right. Brighten it up. You gotta but, get some uh, pink. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. I'll yeah, leave yeah. them on. Right. Rick, if I'm not mistaken, your version of House of the Rising Sun did bigger than the Animals version, didn't it? Yeah, I think Animals were seven hundred thousand copies, yeah. and we sold seven and a half million. Yeah, I was going to say, and I was actually at Rick's house, saw his gold album, and back then, to get a gold album was really hard. You had to sell over two million copies to get a gold record, and you sold seven and a half, huh? Seven, well, 45 was seven and a half. Months. Wow, that's a lot. That is just fantastic. Mm. Brent, 
You wrote this recent uh, song that we're going to see here on this video from a live performance for the album Made in Detroit. Um, with five great albums under the band's belt, one, why are you recording new albums? And maybe you can tell us a little bit about the song Living Blues. Well, Living Blues is, for one thing, Frigid Pank back in the day was known as the Naughty Boys of Blues, or the Bad Boys of Blues, I should say. And I just want to stick with the tradition. You know? yeah. I, I want this to be a true, true album. You know, yeah. then we, we're trying to keep it to our fans. Well, you really have yeah. kept the Frigid Pink music alive in Detroit, almost more now than ever before. And uh, whenever you get out to see the band, it's packed. So uh, congratulations, Rick, on the brand new record. It's called Made in Detroit. Uh, you don't see too many vinyl albums like this out of Detroit these days. And Rick was one of the first a year or so ago to uh, already get them out into the stores nationwide, right? Yes. So, boy, I'll tell you, this is a good one here, too. And congratulations on the song, Brent. Great Thank job you. on that. It's Thank called Living Blues, and it's right here on Rock 900. <laughs> <laughs>